I'm in our beautiful players lounge. You can't see it all, but we'll do some sort of studio tour video uh, in the upcoming months or so. Maybe when we get a new team in here, we'll show you the whole place, but I thought it'd bring you all over here for a little different scenery in this video. Speaking of this video, we're gonna be looking at how to stream. Now that's not necessarily just in Streamlabs OBS, but that's what I'm gonna walk you through a little bit today. I'm gonna kinda of try to explain some more generic streaming uh, lingo and terms and settings in case you're using some other streaming platform or even if you're on like a Mac, for instance, you can't use Streamlabs on a Mac, but you can use the regular version of OBS. So some features won't be available, some will. We'll walk you through all those and I'll show you how we have our streams set up here at Pacers Gaming. To get started, you're gonna wanna download Streamlabs OBS. That's in the link in the description if you wanna go find that. But once you have it installed, it's either gonna bring you to this page or it's gonna have you log in in some way and connect your streaming account. You're gonna to wanna to create an account on one of these platforms or maybe there's another streaming platform that you have in mind and that's fine. You can select a different platform. You can skip this entire process. You don't have to link your account, but in Streamlabs, it's really, really great to link your account because you get access to a lot of very specific features by platform. So for instance, I'm gonna link my Twitch account. This would be my Twitch personal account. Uh, that's called pixel and bracket. And what it's gonna do is open up this box. I'm gonna have to log in. So I'm gonna have to type in my username and then type in my password. We'll see if I even remember it. Hit login. And depending on how your account's set up, you might have a two factor authentication. So I just got a text message and I'm gonna have to input this security code which is a temporary security code, so no worries here, 623-8963. So you guys might have to do this to set it up. You can remember the computer for 30 days if you ever have to log in again, um, but for the most part, you should be pretty much fine. It's gonna authorize and ask you to gain access to all of these different features on your account. Go ahead and authorize that and click OK. Now you have your account linked, and in fact, all of your scenes and sources and everything are linked to this account. When you log in, it's gonna pull up all of that information. So to start with here, I'm not gonna walk through how to create each of these things. Like for instance, how to add your webcam, how to add your gameplay. You can look at our Elgato videos. Card's gonna be in one of these two corners. On the Elgato HD60S, that's gonna show you how to add your gameplay as well as a microphone to your stream. And the Elgato green screen tutorial video that we did is gonna show you how to add your webcam and the settings that we select for that. That one you can skim, you don't have to watch the green screen part unless you have a green screen, shows you how to add that too. So on the left here we have scenes. Scenes are kind of like a collection of well, sources and different assets that you can rearrange and uh, organize in your own way. So for instance, if you had an intro screen and an outro screen, those would be different scenes and you have a different graphic on each of those scenes. Speaking of graphics, that's what your sources are. You can add graphics, you can add audio, you can add video, you can add media files, you can add your alerts, your chat box, all sorts of things can be added in here. To add those, you're gonna hit the plus icon and you have all sorts of different things that you can add within Streamlabs. We're not necessarily going to cover all that. What we're really gonna show you how to do in this video is how to stream. So what are the settings you need to input into Streamlabs or whatever your stream software is and how, how, do, you, how do you go live, right? So you created an account on another platform like Twitch, YouTube, anything like that. You maybe linked it to your streaming software like Streamlabs, or you didn't link it and you're in another one. Doesn't matter. Either way, you're gonna have to use a stream key. And let's use Twitch as an example. So if I go over to Twitch and I navigate to my creator dashboard, on the left-hand side of the new creator dashboard, we see a little hamburger menu. If we open that up and go down to preferences, channel, we're gonna see our primary stream key. And I'll actually show it to you guys here. It says never share it, but on Twitch you can reset the stream key, which I'll make sure to do, so none of you guys are streaming on my channel. I'm gonna hit I understand. You see it's got this entire stream key. It's a crazy set of letters and numbers. 
It's a unique key that allows you to plug into your streaming software and it will send all of whatever it is you're streaming to that channel. And every platform has a different stream key. So if you're streaming on YouTube, it would be a totally different stream key. You're gonna to wanna to copy that and bring it back to your streaming software and insert it into wherever the settings have that stream key uh, set up. So for instance, here in Streamlabs, in the lower left-hand corner, we have the settings tab. When we open that up, there's a general tab and there's all these different ones. We're gonna be looking at stream, output, and video for today. So if I go to stream, we can already see that it's linked my Twitch account. So I can stream directly to Twitch. I don't even have to do anything. Because we linked our Streamlabs Twitch uh, to our Twitch account, I don't have to put my stream key in there at all. It already knows what the platform is that I'm streaming to. Streamlabs just released multi-streaming. We won't get into that in this video, um, but you can also stream to a custom ingest, and that means you can stream to a custom platform. You can set your streaming service, whether you have a custom server, which all of the platforms will give you that information. For instance, this one service is gonna be Twitch. I'll set the server to auto and the stream key, that's exactly where I would paste in that stream key that we looked at before on my Twitch channel. Okay, so if you're in Streamlabs OBS, you're able to link your account, which means you can stream directly to the platform. You don't have to copy your, your stream key. But if you're in another uh, software, streaming software, you're gonna have to copy that stream key and paste it in like we did right there. Now, that's the main thing to get your stream going, but Everyone's got a different internet connection. Everyone's gonna be streaming at different bit rates and different settings. So let's walk through our recommendations, what we stream at here, and then maybe some recommendations depending on what your internet is. So if we look at output first, we're gonna have two different modes here in Streamlabs, the simple mode and then the advanced mode. We're gonna look at the advanced mode. For streaming, we can select where our audio is coming from. We just keep that on audio track one. The encoder, I keep on software. I, I know that these options are sort of uh, foreign probably to a lot of you. I wouldn't even worry about it. I would just keep it on software for now. That's what we stream on, works just fine. You can see that you can rescale the output, but I wouldn't rescale it here. We're gonna rescale it somewhere else. Then we have rate control, and this is where your internet connection matters the most. I keep it on constant bit rate for our streams, and the bit rate we set it to we probably stream more around 4,000 here or higher because our internet allows for that. I'm gonna put up a list here though of what Twitch recommends your bit rate should be depending on what your internet connection is and when we go to the video tab, depending on what size you're streaming at. Are you streaming at 1080p, 720p? It just depends and that changes how much data is getting sent to your stream and how much upload speed you need to have on your internet. As we scroll down, there's a couple different options here. I keep keyframe interval on zero, but a lot of recommendations are two. I would recommend just trying both those, seeing which, which way makes your stream a lot smoother. Uh, for CPU usage, the faster or the higher, the less CPU is getting used, so we keep it on very fast to try to temper the amount of CPU that we're using. And as far as profile tune and the rest, we just leave those as default. I'll switch over to video. This is where it's gonna matter a little bit. So I keep the base canvas resolution at 1920 by 1080. That's 1080p, that's like HD size. And so then I can create all my graphics at that size. Or if you're looking to download assets for your streams, you can download assets that are made to be that size. But if you want to not stream at that high of quality, for instance, on Twitch, depending on what level of a streamer you are, you actually might not have the options for your audience to change the quality of the stream. So you, they might not be able to change it from the high def, you know, 1080p stream down to 480 or 720 because maybe they're on mobile and they're on cell and they don't, they're on a cell phone and they don't want to use all that data that option might not be available unless you're affiliate or higher. It just kind of depends. So you might think about that a little bit. You might also though think about your internet connection and that's where you might output that to a 720 
1080p stream. That's something to think about. If your internet connection is a little bit slower, it's gonna allow you to use a higher bit rate or it's gonna allow you to at least stream, even though you maybe don't have the fastest internet. It's also gonna allow your audience to not use as much data when they're watching your streams. Or if they don't have a good internet connection, it gives them a better stream experience, especially if you're not at one of the higher levels and don't have those options that we talked about before. Now, we are scaling this resolution and we're downscaling it. So we have downscale filter options. The, I don't even know how to pronounce this, like Lankzos filter is probably the most sharp and best looking filter for downscale options. Um, that's the one we would recommend. And the last thing down here, obviously if you absolutely cannot, even with a low bit rate or 720p streaming, get 60 frames per second, Sure, you can stream at 30, but the best, best, highest quality stream is gonna be 60 frames per second. And that's what you're gonna to wanna to switch your video to right here. And I would recommend that you prioritize this, prioritize the frame rate. So in those, I'll put them up again here, in those Twitch recommendations, if you can't do 1080 at 60 frames per second, then my next option that I would select would be 720p at 60 frames per second. I would not go 1080 at 30. I would rather do 720 at 60. Anybody watching on mobile won't even know that your stream's not in high quality 1080. They won't be able to tell the difference on here and half the people won't even be able to tell the difference. They're watching it in a tab view or something on their laptop. It's, it's gonna be fine streaming at 720 and you're gonna get a smoother stream and I'm sure not everyone's internet is up to par. You might not even think you can stream, but you probably can. At 720p, 60 frames a second, lower the bit rate a little bit, just like those recommendations, and you're gonna be good to go. So that's pretty much it for this. What you're gonna do is just sort of exit out or hit done and save these, and then you're gonna go live here in, of course, we don't have any video sources yet, which is fine. We're gonna go live anyway. Make sure you have some actual content in your stream. But you're going to change the title here, you can change the game that you're playing, you can add tags, and then you can confirm and go live. And once you do that, you are live, my friends, and I would start talking to your audience right away. That's it for this video. I know I covered a lot of stuff and I probably lost some of you here and there, but I hope that this was helpful. To anybody looking to start streaming, I realized that we walked through Streamlabs OBS and maybe you are using that, maybe you're using something like regular OBS or XSplit. They're all a little bit different, but they're all pretty much the same. You're pretty much creating scenes, putting items in those scenes like your webcam, your overlay, stuff like that. And then you're using that stream key to plug into your streaming platform and go live. That's how you stream, that's how we stream here at Pacers Gaming. I will let you know and update you if we ever change any of these settings or ever have any other recommendations. If you found this video helpful, if you have more questions, hit us up down below in the comments from everyone here at Pacers Gaming. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.